Good evening, everyone. My name is Angel Donahue Rodriguez. I'm the Director of Special Projects at the MBTA. Very much appreciate everyone coming here for this uh, really important project and the update that our team is going to provide. Um, uh, before we get started, uh, I wanted to open up the floor uh, to um, Senator Lewis and other members of the delegation uh, to provide a few words uh, about the project uh, and the work that in collaboration that we've been having uh, over the last year um, to get to the point where we are today. Um, Senator Lewis, if you are, I believe you are on, um, uh, I think we will be unmuting you. He is unmuted now. Great. Senator Lewis. Okay. Great. Thank, thank you, Angel. Um, appreciate this opportunity to say a few words. And I, I want to thank the uh, MBTA uh, team and, and Jacobs for uh, holding this uh, important public meeting tonight. And I certainly want to thank all of the um, uh, Winchester residents and others for, um, for joining us as well. Um, I think as probably everyone knows, you know, this has been a long and arduous process uh, to uh, bring us to this point in time. Uh, this project really got underway, you know, more than a decade ago and a tremendous amount of time and work you know, has gone into uh, moving this project forward uh, through the years. It's, um, it's a very challenging project, just given the location of the station, squeezed right in, of course, to Winchester's downtown. Um, there's a lot that needs to be done to, um, you know, to improve this station. And so it has taken a long time and a lot of iterations back and forth to, you know, finalize the project design and work through all of the issues. But reaching the construction phase which is where we are now is really a major milestone and i and and i'm very pleased that we've that we've gotten here a um, lot of work still to do on demolition of course in the coming months and then the construction of the new station which will take a few years but when the project is complete i'm very confident that it's going to bring tremendous benefits to winchester and the entire region uh, we will have a brand new, modern, safe, fully accessible uh, commuter rail station. We will be able to encourage much greater use of public transit uh, in this area, uh, which is part of our goals for addressing climate change and, uh, and improving our quality of life. Um, and it will also, I believe, support transit-oriented development uh, in, uh, in the town and the area, including more affordable housing, uh, retail, and commercial development. Um, so it will unlock, I believe, tremendous pot uh, economic potential for this, uh, for this area. I want to recognize and thank a number of people who have been key to moving this project forward uh, through the years uh, in, the, in the town of Winchester. Um, uh, first and foremost, town engineer Beth Rudolph, who has basically been, been leading this effort on the part of the town since the very beginning. I want to thank both former town manager Richard Howard and current town manager Lisa Wong for their terrific leadership. I want to thank my colleagues in the delegation uh, throughout this, this process, Senator Jalen and Representative Mike Day, who've been terrific partners. And I want to um, finally thank the members of the, the Winchester Town Working Group, um, who many of whom have been working on this project also for, for 10 years. They include Mary McKenna, Dave Anderson, Chris Mulhern, Ryan Szekely, Heather Von Mering, Julie Riemenschneider, Lance Grenzbach, and Dave Storygard. Thank you very much to all of you for all of the input you provided uh, on the design uh, through many years. And I wanna thank the MBTA general manager, Steve Poftak, and um, uh, his team, including the folks on the, in the, from the MBTA on this, um, in the Zoom today, for all the work you've done on this project and for prioritizing this project um, and the funding required, uh, which is more than $50 million to uh, build this new station. We are deeply appreciative of that investment that the MBTA is making in this, uh, in this uh, infrastructure. So again, thank you uh, for um, joining us this evening and look forward to the presentation and moving forward uh, with the uh, construction of the new station. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, I, I wanted to also turn it over to, um, to Senator Jalen uh, and see if, the, if, there were, if there were a few words that she wanted to have. Uh, and then after that, we'll go to Representative Day. Senator Jalen. 
I just unmuted Senator Palin. Now, am I sure? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I want to say that I agree with uh, Senator Lewis on all his thanks. I don't want to reiterate them because I want everybody to get straight to the viewing of the plans. I just want to say that many times we lose faith and optimism that we will ever get to starting this project. But here we are, and it's finally coming to pass. And it will be uh, another two years in the in the making, but it will really be worth it. And I'm very excited that we are finally starting uh, to do this work. So thanks to all the people who've brought us this far, far and we'll look forward to seeing um, what happens next. Thanks so much. Thank you, Senator. Representative Day, and then uh, last but not least, uh, uh, Mr. Michael Betancourt, the chair of the Board of Selectmen. Bear with me one sec, Representative Day. His uh, mic is now unmuted. Representative? Am I on there? Yeah. Yes, you are. All right. They had me in uh, timeout, I think, for a moment there. <laughs> I'll be exceedingly brief um, on this end because, uh, as we can tell with this project, time is money. Um, this has certainly been a torturous uh, process with price tag changing and uh, this putting on hiatus briefly and then coming off when they realized uh, how bad the, the station shape was in dangerous wise. Um, so our job um, is to make sure that we as a legislative delegation, keep the lines of communication open, uh, make sure that all parties are adhering to their uh, guarantees and commitments, um, and move this along as expeditiously as possible. And that means on our end, making sure that the town, the residents and the businesses all have open lines of communication with us as well as the T. Um, a, a, thank uh, uh, Angel as well as um, General Manager Poftak for keeping those lines open and uh, can assure everyone here tonight uh, that they'll remain open um, as this project gets underway and as we start moving towards uh, what Senator Lewis called that, that uh, brand new accessible and state-of-the-art facility that I think is going to revolutionize and certainly jumpstart our downtown um, in Winchester. Thank you, Representative. Uh, and last, I uh, wanted to welcome Mr. Michael Bettencourt, the Chair of the Board of Selectmen. Um, we're going to meet you in a second, and then we'll get the presentation going. Mr. Chairman, are you on? What was the last name again, Angel? I'm sorry. What was it? Sorry. Ben Court. Sorry. No, it's all good. Ben Court, yeah. Can, can you hear me now, Angel? Okay. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, thank you. I know there's been uh, a lot of comments already from uh, elected officials, so I won't um, go on for too long, but I, I do want to say uh, thank you to the MBTA for um, sticking with us on this project, our delegation for really fighting hard to get it uh, back on track. Um, and I want residents to know at the local level that we will be um, really starting, this is the beginning of our uh, an ongoing communication process with residents um, that will uh, look to hear feedback and uh, make recommendations. We realize that there's going to be a lot of impact on day-to-day uh, -day services and uh, parking um, for our uh, great businesses. And uh, we're already engaging in a parking study uh, to evaluate the impact uh, of the, the project. And uh, it, it, the demolition uh, piece of this came a little bit faster than uh, we perceived. And so uh, we're responding very quickly and getting together a study and uh, we'll be engaging with residents on an ongoing basis. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it and uh, um, 
uh, that, that I'll just say, uh, say thank you and, and um, look forward to the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, now I'd like to turn it over to Nathan Ray, our senior project manager, um, who will walk us through the presentation. Um, and then we will open it up for questions for members of the public um, uh, if they have any. So uh, Nathan, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're excited to update everyone on the call tonight about the latest updates to Winchester Center Station. So uh, just to notify everybody that there's a recording and though there's a Q&A best practices, there's a Q&A going on after the presentation. Um, so we are recording this, um, recording in the chat transcript and uh, it'll be considered a matter of public record. Um, the meeting recording will be posted on the project website following the conclusion of the meeting. So at the last slide, we'll show you the project website so you can go there for the latest information and um, any project updates as well. The Q&A after the presentation, like I said, um, please share only one question or comment at a time. You can uh, use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to submit a typed question or comment. Press the raise hand button to share your question or comment verbally. So wait for the moderator to recognize you and unmute you before speaking. So agenda for tonight, uh, welcome and opening remarks we had already. We're gonna present the demolition work as well as the uh, update to the accessibility improvements project. This is the new station project that um, has traditionally been the main focus of uh, discussion at these public meetings. And then we'll have a time for Q and A. So uh, just to talk about the uh, MBTA side of who has been involved with this project. Katie Cho, the Chief of Capital Delivery. Nazanin Wissahebi, Deputy Chief of Capital Delivery. Anthony D. Dominicus, Senior Director of Commuter Rail Stations and Facilities, as well as Maribel Kelly, Senior Director of Commuter Rail Infrastructure. Panelists tonight are Angel, whom you've already seen, myself, Jason Petal from SPS New England, Senior Project Manager, who is the general contractor undertaking the demolition work currently going on right now at Winchester. He's joined by Joe McKinnis, also from SPS, as well as Mark Thompson, Jacobs Project Manager. Jacobs is the designer for this station. I wanna first off talk about the demolition work that's currently uh, going on at Winchester. Uh, for those who are new to the project, um, traditionally there's been one construction project that we've been talking about. Um, demolition and reconstruction was all considered to be uh, one project. Now we are breaking it into phases. And so in this presentation, we'll be talking about the demolition work as well as the uh, greater project happening uh, later on this year. The we call the accessibility improvements or the or the new station build project. So, first of all, we're going to talk about the first phase, which is the demolition work. Just to give you a background to how we got here, uh, some of you may know that on January 7th of this year, Winchester Station was closed. This was a result of an inspection that indicated significant infrastructure deterioration. MBTA then engaged SPS New England to mobilize to start necessary and urgent demolition work at the station. We call this on-call repair. This is a kind of a standby contractor that the uh, MBTA uses um, to engage in such work as what we're talking about here with the demolition work at Winchester. The cost of this work or value of this work is approximately 1.2 million dollars. And the main scope of this demolition phase of the work involves demolition of some of the ramps, some of the platforms, and all of the canopy structures at Winchester Center. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So that's a, a, 
a bit of the why, a little bit more explaining why we're doing this demolition work. Um, so we had recently, the MBTA, undertaken uh, biweekly inspections at Winchester starting uh, late fall last year. Um, of course, most people are aware of the serious nature of the deterioration at Winchester. The station was built in the 1950s with no serious um, renovations happening since that time. There's been uh, rusting, spalling of concrete. Um, there, the station does no longer meets any sort of accessibility requirements. And so um, that, and also due to the inspections that we were undertaking, <clears throat> we decided that it was out of abundance of caution best to close the station and start demolition work. Well, what are we doing in this phase of the project? We have undertaken pre-construction surveys of local buildings. We have implemented the traffic management control plan. We have uh, implemented the pest control plan. We have installed temporary fencing in the areas of Laraway Road, Aberjona parking lot, as well as the Waterfield parking lot. And we have started the uh, initial phases of the demolition of the ramps, platforms, and canopies. And of course, the station is currently closed and will remain closed uh, during demolition, as well as through into construction, the construction project happening in the fall. A little bit more about uh, the project details and what exactly we're doing at this phase of the project. I'm going to take you through some elevations um, that will be familiar to most people on the call. And just to kind of explain in a little bit more detail what you're going to be seeing uh, as we advance through the demolition phase of this work. You'll see that we'll be removing the canopies here. This is in the Aberjona parking lot um, in red there. All the canopies are being removed. We are removing uh, the ramps in this area, the, the overhead ramps. Those are coming down as well. A little bit further down the Aberjona next to the water, Waterfield Road. Uh, again, all the canopies over the platforms as well as the ramps. Um, the ramps themselves, we are leaving the low level uh, ramps in place. They will be uh, demolished in the follow on contract, the new build contract happening uh, later this year. Over Waterfield Road, looking to the west. We are removing the canopies over Waterfield Road. The uh, platform will remain in place and will be uh, part of the scope of the new build contract happening this fall. This is at the Quill Rotary uh, behind Thompson Street there. You see uh, a section of ramp and overhead uh, platforms that will be coming out. That ramp will be staying in place for now. We are removing the section of overhead platform, however, uh, in this phase of the project. We're back down at the Waterfield lot now. We are removing all the canopies again, as well as the sections of ramps that are overhead. So all that area you see in green is coming down. The canopies over the ramps and platforms are coming down and uh, the remainder will be um, left to the project happening uh, the new build project happening later this year. So over on Laraway Road, uh, just past Waterfield Road, again, all the canopies are uh, being removed in this project. A little further down, you'll see yet again more canopies, a section of ramp that um, is cantilevered over um, Laraway Road there is that'll be removed in this demolition phase. Of course, all that temporary uh, shoring work that you see there is, will, be, will be coming and being removed, is coming down, being removed as well. Uh, end of Laraway Road at Quill Rotary, we are removing the <clears throat> section of platforms overhead and the canopies over the ramps there on the right. 
And that concludes the kind of the scope of what we're talking about in terms of the demolition, what we're doing in this phase um, of, of the project at Winchester. Impacts, <clears throat> of course, there are service impacts already mentioned. Uh, trains will continue running. However, they're not stopping to board and alight at Winchester Center. The local bus stop at Winchester Center is currently being bypassed. So we invite any patrons who normally board there to go to uh, Main and Vine Streets or the closest other bus stop that may be in their area. Other project impacts include uh, those related to construction. These may include noise, dust, vibration impacts, um, other sort of construction uh, related impacts due to demolition work, as well as associated traffic impacts due to construction activity. So we'll talk a little bit more about those. To help uh, mitigate some of these impacts that are common to every construction project, we've undertaken pre-construction surveys, like I mentioned previously. Um, for communication purposes, we've set up a construction hotline where we can allow anyone who has a sort of concern about what's going on with construction to call that number. That'll be available at the end of the presentation. We've also set up vibration monitoring as well as noise monitoring. That's been taking place in the past few weeks to get a kind of baseline readings and understanding what the vibrations and noises are at the during a, a normal day uh, prior to demolition. Uh, we have already set up pest control and undertaken the early stages of that plan. We are ready and have are ready to implement a dust control plan. And we have um, started our traffic management plan, as you most likely noticed in downtown Winchester right now. So a little bit about the when. Um, I know people are concerned about how long this work is going to go on. Um, and so we'll just talk a little bit about that now. So we've broken down this demolition phase into four phases itself. Mobilization. We started going on site in early February. This is when we started the traffic management plan. We set up our pest control plans, uh, some fencing, um, and we've uh, done our preconditioned surveys as well in that phase. That phase is now complete. We are in phase two of abatement. This is the demolition work that has to happen separately before the what we are calling heavy demolition work in phase three. This is really the, the, the meat and potatoes of the demolition work, the removal of the ramps, the canopies, and the platforms. Abatement is a removal of the, involves removal of the roofing material on the platforms, as well as the paint uh, on the columns, as well as this steel and other rails, uh, railings that are at the station right now. Final phase is demobilization. So uh, we are clearing up and uh, shipping off site. Um, we are anticipating to be off site by the end of May. Um, there's a few factors, of course, that affect this. One is the weather. We're undertaking work in winter in New England. There's certain uh, delays that we can expect with weather. Uh, in addition to that, there are delays associated with working next to live track, um, we call this track, getting necessary track outages or track time, foul time, um, as well as getting the safety personnel in place to uh, support the construction activity at Winchester um, is uh, a reality in undertaking construction work next to a live, live track. So this is, this is, uh, this schedule is something that we, we, you know, we want to adhere to. We are working to um, be out of everyone's way as soon as possible, realizing that we will be back later this year um, for a longer stay. Um, and we'll talk about that later. So that was the demolition phase of the project. Now I want to talk a little bit about the, the new build project, the accessibility improvements project that we're talking about and uh, sort of the updates that we have on that from our last meeting in March of last year. 
a little bit about the project goals and scope for this phase of the project. We have uh, certain goals, things that we want to accomplish uh, in each of our construction projects at the MBTA. And then sort of how do we carry out those goals and what are the specifics? Uh, and that's the scope of each of those goals. So our first goal is to increase safety at, uh, at, at for the final build of the project. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to install permanent and emergency lighting. We are installing security cameras at the platforms as well as passenger assistant telephones. We want to, as a goal, uh, increase accessibility. Currently, the station, um, when it was open, was not accessible. Um, so this will, this new build will see two fully accessible high-level side platforms, covered stairwells, wayfinding signage, uh, new platform canopies, benches, mm -hmm. uh, new elevators at the south end, and uh, an, an additional elevator that's been added. Another goal is sustainability. Um, we are using new fiber reinforced polymer composite panels. So what does that mean? Well, these are uh, lightweight, high strength to weight ratio platforms that are resistant to, for example, the deterioration that we've seen in the concrete there. This is a new material that will be resistant to uh, weather and de-icing chemicals. Uh, and so we're, we're anticipating that this will give that station a bit of extra longer life. Another goal is resiliency. We, um, of course, want to plan for high, um, higher, more, more severe weather events, flooding, those sort of things. So we are locating, you know, from an operational point of view, locating various important equipment um, at certain elevations so that they are resilient and resistant, resistant to weather events. Um, operational goals, um, you know, this high level boarding where we, you know, we walk straight on to the to the coaches from the platform. We'll shorten our dwell time, and we're anticipating that will result in shorter trip times and a better customer experience as well. This is the proposed future station plan. This may be familiar to some people. There are some slight changes from when we last met in March of last year. The quill rotary there is on the right, so that's the, the north going to the north end of the station, and then Aberjona Waterfield lots on the left side of the screen. So uh, the inbound track, that's the one on the top side, that has not changed since we last spoke. There is an elevator down at the Waterfield lot with stairs over on the Laraway Road um, section of the of the inbound platform. There are stairs and and a ramp. What's changed in this layout that um, some people may may not notice is formerly in the previous design there were there was a pedestrian bridge that extended from the outbound platform over the quill rotary down to a ramp on Shore Road. Subsequent to our last meeting in March, it was decided to change this plan. You'll now notice that the ramp on Shore Road has been moved down to the Aberjona parking lot. We have added an elevator behind Thompson Street at the Quill Rotary with a new set of stairs. We needed to keep a ramp uh, to meet accessibility concerns. We want to provide redundant means of access for uh, accessible uh, accessibility concerns. So these sort of changes are, are really what constitute the majority of the changes that you had seen uh, previously in March. So this is what you're going to see uh, for the new build at Winchester. This is this is a photo looking at the town common, looking at Laraway uh, Waterfield Road, rather. Um, you see the elevators on the right hand side there at the Waterfield lot and uh, you see Laraway Road there going across the middle with stairs and canopies and ramps. This is again from the town common looking at the elevation of Laraway Road where the current bus stop is. You see the ramps there um, and canopies and uh, a stairwell at the corner of Larry Way and Waterfield. So 
So transit alternatives during construction. We know that in uh, our patrons uh, prior to COVID uh, were concerned about how they would uh, be continuing their commute during construction. Um, a few options are available. There's a local bus that Route 134 that runs through Winchester that connects to the Orange Line. Of course, there's Wedgemere Station also in Winchester. So we invite our patrons to choose either, either of those options if they are going into Boston. Uh, there's the option of walking, biking, or dropping off if you are intending to go to Wedgemere Station. <clears throat> During construction, we are planning on and supplying additional bike storage as well at Wedgemere. Um, just to make sure that people who choose those options um, have that uh, necessary availability there. We realize there are parking impacts to what we're doing. Uh, Senator Lewis said this is right in the middle of your downtown and we are fully aware of that. The parking impacts are a very sensitive issue. We understand that um, the importance of people parking downtown um, has a very important uh, role to play in businesses in downtown Winchester. Uh, the, fi the final build project it will be taking up the similar amount of parking um, as you currently are seeing at the, for the demolition phase of the work. Uh, the average on a parking lot, there will be a considerable uh, spaces taken up there. Um, Laraway Road as well is very key for us um, in uh, affecting the work that we need to do. We need to work from Laraway Road to build the infrastructure behind Thompson Street because it's just it's so tight and behind Thompson Street. There are some uh, areas of the parking impacts that are be for the duration of construction. This is I'm talking again about the final build project, the accessibility improvements project happening later this year. Uh, such as Lairway Road would be the majority of the time, as well as the um, Everjona Waterfield lots. There are some sections on Waterfield Road that you see there. Um, we anticipate those being um, isolated um, takings um, to perform overnight work. There's some the bridge platform work that needs to be replaced there. Um, for the demolition phase, by the way, there's some work that needs to happen on Waterfield Road. We are anticipating that occurring at night or on the weekend. What to expect during construction. We are, uh, will again be undertaking pre-construction surveys. This is a new contract with a new contractor. So we understandably have to take uh, new surveys to understand what the existing buildings have in terms of uh, their condition prior to construction. A, a note about parking also, um, you know, when speaking about service impacts, we are trying to um, get parking um, and we are anticipating a return of ridership uh, increasing more uh, in, the, in the fall as Hopefully things start to open up again. We're looking at Shannon Beach. We're in talks with DCR, by the way, to try to find some parking spaces down there in anticipation of more patrons choosing the Wedgemere station for the commute. So what to expect during construction, uh, pre-construction -constru surveys. Um, again, more mitigation of construction impacts, um, like I mentioned for the demolition project. We will have field personnel on site, MPK field staff, resident engineers, and field inspectors. We will have the uh, communication resources I previously mentioned, construction advisories, updates. We have our website, we have our hotline, and our email address. A little bit more about project schedule. Um, we were at 60% design in November of 19. Uh, final design was last March. We are advertising for the final station build project uh, in the spring of 2021. Hopefully award that in the summer with construction happening starting in the fall of 2021. Public outreach. 
please send us an email at winchesterstation at nbta.com. There's our construction hotline number and our project website. So I'll turn it back over to Angel to run the Q&A. I think uh, I got nominated to do the Q&A, Nathan. So Nathan, it's Joe Nolan from City Point. Thank you so much for that very informative presentation and, uh, and Angel for, for bringing us in and everybody for their, their comments earlier. Um, Nathan just went through the public information slide and I just wanna remind people, if you're not already on our database, please go to that and send us an email and we'll add you so that when, when there are temporary shutdowns of parking in certain areas or, or, or impacts that you'd like to be made aware of, you'll be on the database and receive an email. Um, for our question and answer period, we have some questions already in the queue. We, I see six there, but let me just go through the rules so people understand. Please share only one question or comment at a time. If you're on the telephone and you wanna be recognized, dial star nine and that will alert us to your in, uh, wanting to ask a question and I'll call out the last digits of your phone number and, and let you know it's your turn to ask that question. Uh, as I stated earlier, and I see many of you already have, you can just type in a question in the Q&A period and we're gonna to go to those in just a moment. You can also raise your hand. If you look, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a raise hand function. If you just click on that, we will see you as an attendee with your raised hand and we will go through those in order and give everybody a chance to ask their questions. So with that, I think we will start off with the Q&A and the written questions that we have, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Roger Wilson asked, just as we opened up, are these slides available for download? Um, this whole presentation with the slides will be uh, posted on the MBTA website after it is made accessible, and that should happen, we assume, uh, tomorrow. So that will be available for people to review. Um, the next question uh, that was asked was, uh, it was noticed today that asbestos removal appears to be done in an unsafe manner. Um, if workers are wearing asbestos removal suits, why is the asbestos not being disposed of using safety guidelines, i.e. I. no breakage, plastic encasements, et cetera. So uh, Nathan or one of your team, could you elaborate a little bit more on the asbestos removal process and, and uh, the, the guidelines that are being implemented? Sure. So it, backing up a little bit, in the design phase of the project, we had uh, underwent a hazardous materials building survey this is very common in the construction industry. That survey identified asbestos in the roofing materials of the platforms. The roofing materials in the canopies of the ramps did not have asbestos, but there was asbestos identified in the roofing material uh, of the platforms. This is very common for the construction of the era. In addition, there was a uh, lead paint found on uh, most of the steel, the columns, uh, some, I think the rails, uh, railings as well. Um, so these have to be uh, demolished or abated in, in a special manner. There's uh, regulations and rules regarding how this uh, asbestos and lead is abated. So uh, you saw in the schedule that we are currently undertaking the abatement phase of the demolition work. Um, and so the, it's important to note that, you know, when you talk about asbestos, um, it's usually grouped into one of two uh, hazards. It's, we call it friable or non-friable. Uh, friable being the more hazardous uh, material that's crumpled, pulverized, or reduced to powder with just your hand pressure, as well as then you have the non-friable, which is uh, the less serious or less hazardous risk. Um, it's not easily, um, you know, uh, crumpled with your hand. So we have non-friable asbestos on the roofing material at Winchester. This is the safer, uh, more easier to deal with asbestos. So we uh, are, we hired a um, SPS New England who hired a, a specialized demolition company to undertake this work. We have a resident engineer on site. They are monitoring the work. Um, in regards to making this work safe, it's done with um, various means of making sure that none of the asbestos becomes airborne. 
This was done through watering of the roof. Um, you wet the material before it's removed. There are uh, HEPA, HEPA shrouds on the tools that they use. Um, they remove the roofing material in pieces and dispose of it in bins that are uh, wrapped in plastic. And so we handle the asbestos in, in this manner. It is our understanding that this is, was done according to all the regulations um, that stipulate how this work is to be carried out. Um, when the concern was raised today, our resident engineer was on site. He was able to confirm that the, the, everything was being followed as per regulation. Um, if there's any other sort of um, hazards or concerns that are out there, we're welcome. Uh, at any time to to hear those, um, but um, there was a you know an, an asbestos abatement plan that was submitted prior to any work starting. Uh, that plan was approved, and it was in accordance with uh, standard practices for removing this type of, uh, as I say, non-friable asbestos. And I don't I don't know if uh, Mark or anyone from SPS wants to add to that. So Nathan, I think that's a, a pretty um, expansive reply. And I know that obviously you as the project manager of the MBTA is the owner and our contractors are, are um, it's a very important issue and we're, we're paying close attention to it. And we expect that the abutters and our neighbors in Winchester will, will hold us to that task and it's a priority. That, that I think covers the question from Paul Pinella and also the question from Lorraine Murtaugh. But if Paul or Lorraine have any further uh, questions, uh, let us know. But those are both specifically, essentially, um, the same demo questions. Um, I'm going to go on to uh, parking, which you uh, illustrate. You 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 touched upon during your presentation. There are two questions on parking, and I'm going to go with the first one, which is very basic, which is where are project workers parking during demo and the new build. Um, I will say that we know that parking, while always at a premium in Winchester Center, with the commuter rail station inactive and ridership very low because of the COVID uh, pandemic uh, right now, it may not be an issue, but we expect people ridership to come back and, uh, and at some point we'll, we'll be utilizing some more parking down there. So can you maybe illustrate a little bit on the parking, Nathan, some more and talk about, uh, I, I think you made the point, and I think it's important for people to know that certain areas are, are temporary as we go under the bridge, for instance, et cetera. Sure, just so people are aware, uh, just about the demolition and the, and the parking concerns in the demolition phase of the work. Um, you know, during the, the remainder of, of the work that's going on, in generally we're attacking, SPS New England is attacking the, planning the work from south to north. So um, we are starting in the Aberjona and Waterfield lots and moving north. So, you know, in the interest of um, freeing up parking space uh, as soon as possible, we are considering it releasing those Aberjona and Waterfield lots if, if time permits and it's, and it's feasible to do so. We're very happy, you know, to turn those lots over, uh, take the fencing away so people can park in those lots again. Um, unfortunately, we do need Laraway Road. It's, it's um, going to be a, a main center of loading trucks in and out um, up with debris. Uh, just another important note is um, the town, town of Winchester runs the parking. Uh, the MBTA does not control parking at Winchester. That being said, you know, we understand that a lot of our um, neighbors and um, patrons do uh, are concerned about parking. So, you know, we've uh, undertaken to work with Shannon Beach, uh, DCR to try to get more parking down there. And, um, you know, the, the, the longer that we can, uh, you know, try to plan and mitigate for the parking, and uh, the sooner we can get on that, the, the, the better. And we understand um, that that the, the issues are around the parking. Um, I believe, and this is just from what I understand, that a majority of some of these Everjona and Waterfield lots were commuter rail permitting spots 
Um, of course, you know, we, we uh, closed the station now. So the understanding is that a lot of uh, those spots that were commuter rail permit spots um, are, are no longer uh, being used for that purpose. Um, I don't know, sure if someone from the uh, from Winchester could probably answer this question uh, better. But you know, we with talks with Winchester um, and, and the town workers, um, and you know, it's very it's always uh, first and foremost uh, in conversations about what is the parking impact. We're aware that parking is is, is a very important issue, and we uh, take it very seriously and try to plan with our contractor what parking they'll need, how long they'll need it for, and how we can uh, best turn that over uh, back to the public as soon as possible. Uh, the, the only other thing that I would add to that, Nate, is that we, are, we do work really closely, obviously, with the town, as Nathan uh, had mentioned, and we are exploring other options, such as Shannon Beach um, uh, with DCR to see what available parking we can turn on there to alleviate some of those concerns from folks, um, and those are active, uh, active conversations. Um, that, that are going on at the moment. And, and obviously we're gonna be monitoring right, ridership uh, very closely. So that's the only thing I would add to that. Well, we do have other parking questions and I'm just gonna read the question by Alan Aiden uh, about uh, the possible avail availability of, of additional parking or constructability in the future. Um, Alan mentioned that, as you know, the availability of parking in Winchester Station an ongoing issue over the next few years will be losing many spaces, some temporarily, some permanently. Has there been some thought to allowing the town to extend parking in the Aboriginal lot towards Ginn Field to recover spaces lost to the new station? It's his understanding that the wooded area next to the tracks are MBTA property. This issue will become even more critical when the new station opens and commuter parking returns to Winchester Center. Uh, I don't know if that's been a dialogue with the town as of yet, and uh, or if that might be an option down the road. Uh, I, I can't speak specifically to the to the area in question. Um, I know that there's a, I think a lot of um, potential down in that area. Uh, as I said, the MBTA does not control parking at Winchester. Uh, we don't uh, rent spaces. Um, I think part of the, um, incidentally, you know, why we, the decision to get off the shore road was that we are taking up a lot of parking spaces. And so we are uh, anticipating taking up less parking spaces with this new design for the final build. Um, but that's certainly something, you know, that Alan mentioned, we can, we can, we can talk about that uh, with the town. So Nathan, another parking question from an anonymous attendee. It's uh, construction limited parking spaces, removing all spots in Lower Abijona. Um, I just got a scroll down as we got more questions, sorry. Um, so, and we, we mentioned it might close off, uh, construction demo continues. Will alternate permit parking spots be made accessible? Will other spots be reassigned as permit? And I don't know if they're talking about commuter rail permit there or some other local permit, but I know you could, again, if you could repeat yourself on the efforts being taken to generate more parking available in the right region. Sure. Again, the MBTA doesn't control parking spots in downtown Westchester. I know that there are commuter rail permits. I believe there are permits for downtown employees and there's a, also a mixture of, of metered parking. Um, I understood Mike Bettencourt to say there was a parking study going on. Um, I don't want to preempt anything that may come out of that study. Um, certainly the MBTA um, is willing to work with Winchester to um, help out any way we can um, to, um, you know, help alleviate uh, any sort of pressure in regards to parking for uh, downtown businesses. Great. So uh, another uh, comment from Elena Baker is great progress here. Anticipated time frame for the completion of the construction phase if it starts in the fall of 2021. Sure, we, we are looking at, at that right now, Elena. We are Anticipating, obviously, with doing two construction projects, there are some inefficiencies. Our preference would have been to do one construction project, as was always the case at Winchester, uh, with the advent 
of the station closure due to the inspections, um, we felt it was best to undertake this demolition phase, this urgent demolition work first um, and, and, and do that. Will there be some time savings with the follow on project in the fall? Yes, we fully anticipate that. Um, it's less efficient, however, um, just because, you know, this project, the demolition phase takes uh, however many months, um, you know, the assumption can't necessarily be made that we're going to save those same number of months for the follow on uh, accessibility improvements project. You know, there were, there's an additional mobilization, additional demobilization, um, just inefficiencies with, with those. Um, that being said, we are tentatively uh, estimating for approximately a 28 month uh, project starting in the fall. This still has to be uh, vetted by, um, by we need to update this and, and become more certain of it with um, schedulers um, who undertake this work for us. Um, they need to look at what's happening. You know, I think the last time we had 29 months, we are starting this um, at a different time than we would have started it origin as originally planned under the 29 month scheme. And uh, we're now be moved into more than two winters, whereas before we were planning on just having uh, uh, maybe one winter, one and a half winters worth of construction. Of course, when you do work in the winter, it slows construction down and therefore prolongs the whole uh, schedule of the work. So that's that's where we're planning for right now. This is to be confirmed, of course, um, but that's a, a, a number that we are using for planning purposes right now. Okay, so 28 months and we're looking to see what efficiencies can be made. Um, the, what safety measures will be in place between demolition and beginning construction? Will the site be secured, I think is what's being asked here. Yes, we, we will secure the station. We'll, we'll leave it in a, in, a, in a safe manner. We will leave it fenced off. However, we just wanna ensure that no one can gain access to the platform area uh, once we leave uh, over the, um, interval time of the demolition phase and the new construction project. So we will be fencing it off. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for that question, Lane. Mike Liu uh, asks, uh, how can I subscribe to future notifications? And I can save you on that one, Nathan. And Mike, if you go to the, uh, send an email to Winchester station at mbta.com, we will add you to the database or visit www.mbta.com Winchester station where you'd get the same links. Uh, and, and you will then receive updates as the project goes forward. So Shu Kong asks, it would be helpful to have signage at both train and bus stop areas to suggest alternative routes. Uh, I was at the station and someone asked me where the station went and I pointed him to the direction of Wedgemere, but there does not seem to be any signage to point to either Wedgemere or Vine Street bus stop, maybe a map uh, you're here and you could go there. That's certainly, I would think, something we will can put on the website and put out in as advisory. But uh, Nate, is there a possibility to do some additional directional signage during construction to direct towards other modes of transportation? Absolutely, yes, we, we can take care of that. Um, my understanding that there, there, were, there was signage up there uh, for the bus stop in particular. Um, but we, sh we should have something directing people to, to Wedgemere. Uh, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Thank you. And Shu Kong uh, has another question. Was, Please describe the anticipated status of the Chamber of Commerce building. Will that be staying or is it going to be demol demolished as part of this project? As part of this project, that uh, building is not part of the scope of, of the work that we're doing. Uh, for the neither either the demolition or the or the or the accessibility improvements project, we're we're not touching that building. Okay. So I know that earlier iterations contemplated it. So the current scope is that the the Chamber of Commerce building will stay as it is. Um, will restrooms be available at Stop and Shop and sanitation services? I, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Will restrooms be available at Stop? and sanitation services for same, as well as barrels for refuse on ramps, parking areas and completed project. 
So I guess, are we going to have bathrooms and what are we supplying for other amenities and trash receptacles? Restrooms are not part of the final bill for, for Winchester. Our, our general plan for restrooms is that people use the restrooms on the trains. Um, as far as trash receptacles, we are including those in the design at Winchester. Okay. So the next question I don't understand, uh, but maybe I'll submit the video of the removal. I assume that maybe someone made a, re a video of the asbestos removal today, and uh, they can certainly submit that in for us to look at. I know our staff that project staff was on the f on the on the ground when that happened, but if they want to submit that in through the website, that's that's uh, perfectly acceptable. We can take that in and get it to the project. Now, I just want to look and see. Okay, so um, Debbie Johnson asked, uh, the, she was unfortunately late to the meeting. Did I hear that the plan for the Quill Road Re-Up on ramp has been relocated back to the Aberjana parking lot off Waterfield? Yes, yes. From the, la the last presentation in, in March of last year, we relocated that ramp. We are no longer building anything on the Shore Road area nor are we building anything over the, the quill rotary. Um, I just want to point out that uh, I think Lisa Wong's answering some, some questions in regards to uh, per, pertinent to Winchester, the town of Winchester um, quite related questions, parking, chamber of commerce building. So I don't know if people want to check that out or you want to repeat that. Lisa answered some questions and yeah. So that, why don't we go through them and I don't know, we'll, uh, well, so that was, that was covered. And I think Paul says, yes, thank you. Um, Waterfield Road continues to appear in your renderings of as four lanes of traffic. Um, that's not how the road is used. We have two lanes of traffic and two lanes of parking. Is that going to be four lanes of traffic now? No, that for rendering purposes, you know, we were trying to focus on what we're doing, the scope of work at the station. Um, you know, there's a, obviously there's a, two parking lanes and uh, drive two driving lanes on Waterfield Road. We're not planning on touching or changing any of that MBK in, in this in this project. Okay, so an anonymous attendee asked. Regarding construction slash demo noise, any idea how loud that is anticipated to be as a local professional office that is on calls, court hearings all day, um, this is a considerable concern. Sure, um, just uh, about noise. Uh, we have monitoring in place. Um, we are, are recorded, you know, what the normal noise levels are in the area this is there's obviously trains running by and uh, the normal sort of din of the of the traffic in downtown winchester so we are monitoring and um, to get updates um, as quickly as possible in terms of you know what uh, the effects of the of the demolition of work are at winchester we are taking we are taking steps um, to try to mitigate any sort of disturbances um, but we do have to take down some um, the concrete. This is done um, using fairly large machinery. Um, I, I think I think I'm going to pass the rest of uh, of that uh, poor answer on to uh, either either Mark or, or Jason. Uh, maybe Jason from SPS can add a little bit more of, of the of the noise impact with uh, the his proposed means and methods. Thanks, Nathan. So, yeah, as, as Nathan pointed out, we'll be monitoring the noise and we've taken baseline measurements to date. Um, so we have the ability that if um, the noise reaches a certain threshold, um, we can stop the activities and reevaluate uh, what we're doing. Um, with regards to the machinery that we're using, uh, Nathan mentioned that we're taking efforts to mitigate noise and vibration. Um, the, the demolition contractor is 
using machines that are less um, less di disruptive than uh, machines that they could. Um, you know, instead of jackhammering all of the concrete, it'll be selectively removed and disposed of, which will significantly reduce uh, vibration and noise. So I would say that's the biggest mitigation effort. Thank you, Jason. Um, now I should mention you mentioned earlier, and I just caught up while while Jason was talking, Nathan, that the that uh, Winchester Town Manager has answered some questions uh, with regard to parking. Um, she put in here in, in the in the chat said that the town changed fifty seven spaces in Aberjohnny and Waterfield from permit to two hours. Permit parkers should not be parking those spots. Uh, Ginn is controlled by DCR. They've had conversations, but not much progress yet to use the field. Town's looking at a parking study and analyze what further changes can be made to alleviate those issues. And also, um, town manager Wong mentioned that with regard to the Chamber of Commerce, uh, we did mention that it's not going to be demolished as part of this project, but the building is scheduled to be removed as part of the Waterfield lot redevelopment, likely to start in 2023. So going back to um, well, Lorraine Morta asked, if parking in Wedgemere becomes inadequate, will we will will there be consideration of some shuttle service from Aberjona to Wedgemere Station? We looked at that option. Um, just speaking specifically about Wedgemere, uh, again, the MBTA does not control parking at Wedgemere. I believe it's controlled by DCR and uh, a little bit by the town, if I'm not mistaken. We looked at the cost of busing in this project to get patrons from Winchester Center over to Wedgemere. Um, it was very cost prohibitive. We decided that that wasn't something that we were going to offer our patrons uh, for this project. Uh, we um, nonetheless invite patrons to make their way to Wedgemere if possible. We understand that this, disruptive, this is disruptive to their commutes. Um, but in terms of uh, paying for the cost of busing um, each day for uh, the length of this project, it was something that um, we just couldn't squeeze into our budget. And you're going to be, uh, and you mentioned earlier, and I'll, I'll run the risk of repeating myself that you're looking at the Shannon Beach property specifically and other ways to mitigate parking issues as as service comes back online and we're building the station yeah exactly Th thank you yeah so we, we are again in talks with dcr we have been in the past um, for the possibility of opening up at least off season uh, some parking spaces down there where patrons can walk from from the dcr lot um, over to wedgemere great and we'll be on top of that. This is something that's going to be an evolving thing. This is not a new concern only to Winchester. It's a, this is common on construction projects like this. And uh, we'll be working closely with the town and with the community to try and identify ways to solve it as, as it evolves. As I said, with the no parking at the station now, that, that, uh, that helps downtown. But uh, hopefully some of these options will break in the near term as, as riders come back onto the MBTA. Uh, a question about parking amenities. Could any of these new parking spots uh, the MBTA might identify and create include EV chargers at any locations? Um, you know, we certainly can uh, work with the town to su supply those, um, you know, in any way we, we can, you know, work with them to uh, help that become a reality uh, for the parking spots that the that the town is controlling. Again, the MB, MBK doesn't control any parking spots uh, at Winchester. So parking is really not really uh, in the scope of what we're doing. Um, that's why, you know, we need we need space. Uh, and we've been in talks with the town to get the space we need to build this this station. The property we own at Winchester is uh, basically follows the, the length of the of the viaduct through town, um, about 10 feet or 12 feet or so off of each side of the viaduct is our property line. And um, that's the space that we uh, can control and own. Okay. So just to, to summarize that there's no 
EV chargers in the scope of the current project, but would be happy to work with the town to see what, what uh, you know, long-term, what solutions they might want to impart down there. Um, water drainage accumulates at the traffic circle. Will drainage be improved as part of this project? I don't believe we are touching the drainage in the traffic circle. I know we are um, affecting the drainage in other parts of the of the project. I'm going to let Mark Thompson uh, elaborate on what we're doing in terms of drainage, Mark. So Nathan, uh, we, we won't be improving any of the drainage around in the quill circle, but the drainage coming out of the station itself uh, will be improved and will meet all the Clean Water Act as far as to, uh, uh, putting water in, into the uh, system. So, uh, but we wouldn't be going outside of the station station itself into any of the parking areas and uh, especially on uh, Quill Rotary. Okay. So I think Kayla C has a question about um, the noise mitigation measures. And I think you guys touched on that before. Kayla, if you have more specific questions, you can um, certainly uh, send us an email at the project as things evolve, as things start to get a little noisier and, and you want you know information and on mitigation and stuff, we can continue that conversation. But the next question is kind of similar. Uh, it's more vibration. Winona and Ken L. Muller asked, will impact of vibration be evaluated prior to, during and after construction for nearby buildings, especially considering many are historical? Yes, yeah, we um, set up vibration monitor seismographs uh, prior to construction starting. Um, in regards to the vibration, we did undertake pre construction condition surveys. Uh, we went into nearby buildings, um, at owners uh, approval and consent and, and just, you know, did those surveys there. And uh, so that we could, you know, after construction verify that, um, you know, what, what, if anything uh, changed in the buildings. So, you know, during, before, during and after we have these um, monitoring, the size these seismograph monitors in place. And so we are continually monitoring uh, for, for vibration during, during the project. Thank you, Nathan. Um, Sally Dale asked, this is a good question, Sally. I, I've noticed the same thing. Uh, who will keep the glass clean in the glass towers? The glass at Alewife uh, has not been well maintained and has aged poorly. Not you, Nate. <laughs> Somebody, somebody will hopefully. Uh, I, I, you know what? That's a good question. I haven't, you know, thought about that maintenance aspect of of, of the project yet. Um, obviously, you know, we we these elevators are built to our specifications that the MBTA likes to have. You know, there's accessibility, security concerns that we reasons that we make these elevator shafts out of glass. Um, so that, you know, if anyone's in distress, we can, we can see them on the outside. Um, but in terms of maintenance, um, I'll have to, I'll have to check and see what else, what we're doing in other places at the T for maintenance on these. I know, I know in West Acton station, which was built a couple of years ago, a similar glass towers, those seem to have been maintained and, and held up pretty well. Alewife is a little bit older, but th that's a good point. Well, we should, we'll have an answer for that in the near term and, and maybe put it up on the website. Um, Lynn Brodsky, I, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, um, asked, will there be any enclosed space on the inbound platform so that one can wait protected from the elements? Uh, in the new design, there, there will not be any enclosed space. We understand that, you know, patients have been waiting in the, I think the second floor of the, of the Chamber of Commerce building. That was something that the, the town supplied. Um, because we are elevating the platforms four feet so that they, uh, so we can have achieved the level boarding that we desire for accessibility, um, maintaining that access uh, prevent, presented some difficulties uh, from, from the Chamber of Commerce building. And so um, 
we we increased the amount of canopies um, on the inbound platform since our last meeting um, due to public requests. And so uh, we feel that this meets our MBTA design standards and um, supplies a, a suitable level of protection from elements um, for the station. Okay, so will there be windscreens and canopies, but no access to that that um, Chamber of Commerce building, which sounds like it's gonna be gone in a couple of years also. So uh, are there any updated designs? I'm sorry, Debbie Johnson asked, are there any updated design visuals of the change in the outbound ramp design? I believe we have those on the, there's some in this, this presentation, which will be presented, but we can put more visuals up on the website as well. Does that sound right, Nathan? Uh, design visuals. The the only design visual update I have is the layout um, from 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 the presentation. It shows the Averjona ramp that we that we have um, relocated from the Shore Road area. So we don't have a visual of the other side of the rotary without the ramp. I'm searching my memory i i don't i don't believe i don't believe we do no okay um i i just want to note that i may have misspoke on the the um chamber of commerce building that it's going to be renovated and not removed so i think i misspoke there i apologize going on to the other questions um lorraine murtaugh i understand the mbta is not responsible for the parking lots since the MBTA's closure of center, center Station could cause double the number of commuters reliant on Wedgemere Station, should not the MBTA provide shuttle service in appropriate form, Arbor to Wedgemere? Uh, I think that was covered earlier. If at some point Wedgemere becomes insufficient, I think the solution for Wedgemere is going to be additional alternative parking if we can secure that. But do you want to speak to that anymore, Nathan? Really, yeah. We you know, we're trying to work with DCR to get additional parking down at Shannon Beach. Uh, this is um, this is what we're trying to do in terms of people um, who want to park uh, and use the service at Wedgemere. Um, increased uh, bike lockups there as well. Um, we're um, you know we're we're inviting our patrons to um, to to use any of these services. Um, hopefully, when they when they get sorted out in time for construction. Uh, again, uh, just to reiterate, you know, you know, there are three three aspects of a project. You know, cost, schedule, and scope. Um, we had a certain budget that we needed to meet, and this um, the busing, unfortunately, um, was something that was really cost prohibitive. Um, so we needed to um, make some tough decisions, and um, you know, we focused on the scope of, of the station build, and um, this the temporary bus shuttle had to had to be dropped, unfortunately. Okay, so um, moving on to, to Peter, I, I, I can answer this one. Peter Pulsfer just sent an email uh, to Winchester Station at everyday.com and got an automatic response from Amanda Smith. Amanda Smith was with City Point and left last week. So it says, thank you for your email. Um, please email Kim Tracy. So we, we will fix that uh, tonight. So, so those, those emails were forwarded to somebody who is, is uh, no longer on the project, but we will take care of that. We Chan asked, will you consider putting solar panels on some of the roof shade of the station? Yeah, we've, um, you know, this, this question has come up before. Um, you know, we have limited canopy space um, at, at Winchester. Um, the maintenance is a concern for these solar panels um you know maintaining things next to live track is um you know and cleaning these things when they're on a viaduct uh you know 30 feet in the air um was prohibitive for us it's not a, a necessary design standard that we um follow with mbta um that being said you know it's definitely um something that we've spoken uh to the town about um the town has uh, broached the subject and we've we've, we've we're, um, we anticipate discussing this uh, again in the, in the near future, how we can integrate 
solar panels uh, and what you know what that would be used for uh, at the station. Okay, I know that they've been implemented a lot of other stations. Mostly those are at grade stations that are a little easier to access as opposed to up on the the viaduct. But that's that's obviously something that the T supports when when possible. Uh, anonymous attendee asked. Are maintenance prevention incorporated for future to prevent the deterioration, promote longevity, which seems to be an ongoing need throughout the MBTA history. Uh, I know you mentioned some of the uh, new materials that are going to be used, Nathan, on the platforms that are supposed to, you know, have more resiliency and longevity. Do you want to talk any more about other, or or that could fall into the category of uh, our follow-up that we can get post on the website with regard to maintenance at the station. Sure. Yeah. The, the main aspect that we're um, really keen on um, implementing at Winchester is FRP panels, this uh, fiber resin polymer panels, the uh, high strength to weight ratio. Um, you know, they um, are reported to be very resistant to the usual wear and tear of um, winter uh, de-icing chemicals. So this is the main aspect of the uh, uh, resiliency and longevity prevention of, and you know maintenance concern items that we have is, is are the platforms. So that's the main um, main uh, infrastructure that we're um, you know we're really keen on uh, implementing at Winchester in terms of uh, prevention uh, of deterioration. Thank you, Nathan. And I think the last written question we have is uh, again from Winona and Ken L. Moeller is multi level parking in the plan for the future. I know it's, um, you want to elaborate on that, Nate, and what you may have heard or discussed? Right. Um, so parking is not in the scope of work uh, that we are doing at Winchester. We don't control parking at Winchester. Uh, I know there's lots of other MBTA stations where the MBTA does control parking and they, and they own parking spots. <clears throat> it's not like that at Winchester. Um, I'm not sure if it's in the work for the Waterfield development lot to add multi-level parking, um, but it's not part of something that we're uh, considering at this time for, for, the uh, final build accessibility project. Okay, so Paul Johnson asked, uh, why is the new construction starting in the fall and not immediately after the, the completion of demolition? And he graciously, thank you, Paul, for thanking us for all our hard work and, and best. So uh, why, are, why is there a delay between the end of demolition and the beginning of the new project, the, the improvement project? Sure. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, there's some there's some uh, preliminary legwork that needs to be done. Um, some more um, discussions with the town. We need to um, kind of rejig our plans a bit, our our construction plans and specifications uh, because we divided the project into two. You know, there was uh, work that's no longer part of the original uh, scope of the project that had to be taken out and. Um, we need a certain uh, amount of, we need to have approvals and uh, new estimates and new uh, schedules for, uh, for estimates for cost as well as schedule um, in place before we advertise. There's certain obligations that the MBTA in receiving federal money has to um, perform before we, um, before we procure a contractor it's a certain advertisement phase. Um, there's uh, a bid phase, um, and then we uh, a contractor is selected through um, a standardized process, and then um, there's a certain amount of submittals that have to happen after the project's been awarded. Um, this takes a certain amount of months. There's insurances that have to be exchanged, and uh, you know documents signed. And unfortunately, this you know this takes a number of months to do, and so. That's the, that's the reason why we're saying it's uh, going to be in the fall of 2021. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, Debbie Johnson asked, um, as we're planning, uh, as you are planning on reusing some of the old face stonework, will it be stored off site until it is needed again? Uh, she's concerned about the possibility of theft or, or vandalism. Sure. 
Sure. Yes. Uh, there, there is uh, elements of reuse of the stone um, in the accessibility uh, project happening in the fall. For this demolition phase, um, we tried to really keep the demolition to not just the areas that are most ur that need most urgently to be demolished, but um, work that would kind of, you know, that we could leave and come back to uh, without, you know, doing a whole lot of uh, leaving a whole lot of mess behind, like stacked stone here and there. Um, so, you know, that being said, you know, we are planning on reusing some some stone uh, in the station, uh, full station build. Um, we're not concerned about theft. You know, we'll have um, our people, you know, secure the site after after the demolition phase is over with, and uh, we'll have our security people uh, monitoring the station as well. Great. Well, that that um, covers all the written questions that we had. I know we promised uh, everyone to have them out by 730 and we're, we're approaching that time. Uh, we can certainly entertain any further questions. And I don't know if uh, if uh, Nathan or Angel would like the last word. Um, I guess last chance for, for, for questions. And while you're thinking about that, I invite everybody really to send an email into the Winchester Station MBTA.com. We'll fix the connection for who it goes to and uh, visit the, the MBTA website. And uh, we really appreciate your patience and consideration. I've been on the fringe of this project for the duration. So I know how patient you guys have been and uh, we've tried to work really closely with you. I'm excited to see this thing going, but I'll turn it over to the professionals. Uh, Angel, do you wanna close us out? I uh, just wanted to say thanks, uh, everyone, for all the work. Uh, and again, we look forward to continuing to work with the town and the delegation and all of you. Um, uh, and again, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them over to the Winchester station at mbta.com uh, email, and uh, we, will, uh, we will be as responsive as possible to them. So uh, we look forward to seeing you guys back soon. Um, and uh, thanks for your hard work. Okay. Yeah. I, do, I do see one last question, and I'll leave it to you, Nate. Will workers be, where will the workers be parking? Where are our workers parking? Sure, yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously, you know, we've been in discussion with the town. We're concerned about, you know, uh, the amount of workers that could be on site for the full accessibility project build. Um, we have our planning and um, have, you know, implementing into our construction contract uh, separate places uh, where the contractor can park that will not affect the uh, parking for businesses um, that uh, have customers who want to park downtown. Okay. Well, with that, I think we're going to close out tonight's meeting. I, I again, thank you all. I invite you to uh, visit the MBTA Winchester website and, and email. And if you have any questions as the demolition goes on, send them in there. There's also the construction hotline. And thank you to everybody on this team, everybody in the community, and our partners, uh, our elected officials, and, and uh, in the community there as well. So I think that's it. Everybody have a great evening, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.